I don't know about you, but I love robots. Oh, wait. I do know about you. I don't think it's much of a stretch to say that most of our Chalk Talk audience loves robots, too. And this Chalk Talk has got robots front and center. But not just any robots. We're talking about autonomous mobile robots that are safe around humans and can collaborate with us as well. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. Robotic applications are now commonplace in a variety of segments in society and are growing in number each day. In this episode of Chalk Talk, Alessandro Maggioni from OnSemi and I discuss the details, functions, and benefits of autonomous mobile robots. We also examine the performance parameters of these kinds of robotic designs. The five main subsystems included in autonomous mobile robots and how OnSemi is furthering innovation in this arena. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find even more information about this subject from OnSemi. Hi, Alessandro. Thank you so much for joining me. Thanks a lot. So we're talking all about autonomous mobile robots today. But before we dig into the details, tell us a little bit about OnSemi. Sure. So OnSemi is one of the biggest semiconductor company worldwide. So our headquarters is in Scottsdale, in Arizona, in the USA. And we closed in 2022 with a revenue in the range of 8.3 billion. So we are in the region, in the top players. So we are employing around 33,000 employees worldwide. And we are spread around the world in order to have the best approach for each customer. Like we have 36 design centers in 18 countries. We also has 90 manufacturing sites, also here in nine countries. And also we are taking care about the R&D with eight engineering centers in five countries as well. Here we can see the OnSemi mission. So we have to split between intelligent power solution. So here we allow the enable customer to exceed the range and the target in their power. So allow low temporal operation. So reducing cooling requirements, for example, saving costs and minimize the weight. We also deliver high power with a very less diaper module, achieving high range of battery capacity. And also we're working on enabling electrical vehicles. So we are really driving power efficiency in that system and also accelerating the pace of the carbonization of power. We also have intelligent sensing solution. We are trying to give it the hyper programmable sensor mode to tailor the image sensor for any specific application needs on even temporary conditions. We have imaging performance to deliver a placing image from human vision and sharp details from machine vision. And also we're enabling automotive safety and autonomous driving. So enabling the intelligent automation used to drive productivity improvement, energy efficiency. Excellent. Okay, so Alessandro, let's talk about robots. What specific kind of robotics will we be talking about today? So here it is in an environment that we see robots getting functionally that allows them to work really well. The classic large industrial robots that can lift a car, typically in cage to prevent humans to get close, are not the robots we are talking today. And similar, also the smaller robots that are not designed to be safe around humans. So for example, are the first three robots on the top line. So although power levels on the motor requirements may be similar to warehouse automotive mobile robots. The seven axis cobot, or so called collaborative robots, so in the bottom left, can run off an ECDC or it can be mounted on an autonomous mobile robot and also share many subsystems with AMRs. So the focus is on autonomous mobile robots that are safe around and can collaborate with human and are terrestrial. So in this webinar, we are not so going to touch any drone application. So you can see in the bottom right, an autonomous mobile robot or so-called EMR, which is a type of robot that can understand and move through its environment completely independently. Fantastic. Now, Alessandro, what kind of markets would these autonomous mobile robots be found in? Here you can see that autonomous mobile robot comes in many shapes and form, especially in the last years. One way to classify these autonomous driving platform is by motor power. So in this presentation specific, we will focus on system with motor drivers voltage, which are less than 100 volt, 
and with a power motor less than one kit. So this is exclude, uh, for example, on the top right, uh, all agricultural tractors and those autonomous forklift. For example, you can see here. Of course, Onsemi does also have a full set of products for high power level, so which is including also our silicon carbide MOSFET, for example, for traction inverter, and also onboard chargers. One point that all these robots have in common, that they must navigate through their respective environments completely independently and, of course, safe, because they are together with human and, of course, beside performing a task. So one big difference uh, with automotive self-driving cars is that EMRs operate in a more controlled environment. So, for example, in warehouses, and the speed at which these industrial robots move is much slower. So, in general, they move at a working speed. This is in order to maintain safety for people and the server. So, let's say that warehouse and small retail robots usually have a top speed of around two meters per second, or we can translate around seven kilometers per hour. All right, that makes sense. Now, when it comes to these kinds of robots, what kind of performance parameters should we keep in mind? First of all, is the fast implementation. So there's a need, uh, easy of use feature, so to quick set up and use with uh, intuitive behavior. This is where the different sensor system from Semi, like, for example, in your sensor, inductive rotary position sensor, ultrasonics, uh, and LiDAR, are uh, widely used for sensor fusion techniques, So which is enabling the control software to provide an easy of use uh, tasking of the robot. The second point is the flexibility. So the same type of robot can be used in different applications and collaborate with humans. So this means there's implication for safety. For example, is if I drag an EMR with a cobot, as you can see here in the picture, to use a CNC machine myself. I expect when the EMR is out of reach of the CNC machine, is it safe for myself to reach into and work safely with the CNC machine? So no wireless communication are allowed between the EMR and the CNC machine, else lookout and takeout procedure will be required. We can say that both fast implementation and flexibility requirements as, of course, a cost versus a fixed dedicated solution. So this requirement of cooperating with humans, of course, at a cost. But there's still uh, there is a need for a fast payback. This is important in industrial environment. So the autonomous uh, feature allows for heading EMR and Cobot one at a time in a production environment. So, for example, to take uh, the night shift or packaging or uh, palletized products so during the weekend, this making smaller production runs profitable. This is a result in some exceptional uh, return on investment, for example. Here uh, in this slide, uh, we can see it's, uh, what do they have in common to safely driving among us. So, well, path planning and people are obstacle avoidance. So for the robot programmers among us, they need uh, what's so called uh, SLAM, so Visual Simultaneous Localization and Mapping Algorithms. So, which use a sensory input from cameras or any other sensor like ultrasonic for any sensor fusion. And maybe even more obvious, but all the systems are all battery powered. So, tell me a little bit about OnSemi's approach to autonomous mobile robotic designs. Sure. So, OnSemi Complete Autonomous Mobile Robots concept is a comprehensive robot system designed using the innovative solution and high efficiency from OnSemi. So the concept flexibility can be used to design various types of robots, cobots, power tools, autonomous guide vehicles. So just by combining different existing intelligence and power solution from some Fantastic. So can we take a closer look at a typical AMR design? Sure. So here you can see in this slide, they mean uh, subsystem blocks. So we have uh, the sensor, which are used uh, to interact with uh, the external environments. You have the lighting systems, which are used to provide the signal to the human around. Then we have, of course, the power to charge the battery and to supply all the subsystem internally. We have the communication path to provide signal to external or to connect all together the different bus system. And of course, this is the mobile robots, all the motor control to allow the different movements into the system. And here you can see the typical block drawings of this. So you can see the different blocks uh, for battery charger with uh, the different uh, parts that Unsemi is able to supply. Great. So can we talk a little bit more about the subsystems of these kind of designs? As we discussed uh, in the previous slides, a compute module will need uh, five main subsystems to become autonomous mobile robot. For each subsystem, here we can see the Unsemi solution that are used in Unsemi mobile uh, robot concept. For example, for motor, 
We have the BLDC Motor Development Kit and the Power to Platforms. So for the power, we have our PSU with a battery charger and the DCC converter to supply all the power internally. The lighting kit, all the sensor with image sensor and inductive rotary position sensor, and as well the communication with TenBase D1S and our Bluetooth low energy system. So we have talked a lot about BLDC motor control solutions here on Chalk Talk over the last couple of years. Can you tell us more about this aspect of these kind of mobile robots? Sure. So first, we have a BLDC motor control solution. And there we could choose here between two different platforms, as you can see in this slide. So the first one is a signing based system that uses a discrete gate driver and MOSFET. And uh, it can be used for platforms where more compute power at the motor control level is needed. Secondly, we have a power tool based solution using our NCD83591 as a driver for low voltage compact BLDC system. Okay, so can we also talk about the sensing subsystems too? What does that look like in this case? The autonomous robots need to see where it is going. So it needs an image sensor and a camera mode. Our demonstrator uses an Econ USB camera module, and this uses a global shutter image sensor, which is ideal for autonomous robots. Global shutter sensors store the pixel data in each image in the same time. So this type of sensor does not have any motion artifacts you can see in rolling shutter sensor. So they are ideal for use when moving around factories or warehouse floors. Rolling shutter sensor have a higher dynamic range than global shutter sensor, so can work better where there are extreme difference in lighting condition. However, for autonomous robots working in factory, the lighting condition are suitable to allow the use of a global shutter sensor. So in this case, the ER0234CS image sensor supports a full AHD image at a frame rate of 60 frames per second. Autonomous robots with movable arms use servo motors to control the position of the arms, grabber, and the wheels. So this requires a very accurate position feedback. Further, if the autonomous robot is powered off and then on again, it is important to know the exact position of the arm for safety reasons. An absolute position sensor can determine the position of the arm at any time. Optical sensor, of course, can do this, but they need a lot of external components and they are sensitive to variation in temperature. OnSemi is an established supplier of high reliability custom position sensor for the automotive market since more than 25 years. From this experience, we have developed a dual inductive position sensor solution, which uses the NCS 4200 sensor controller. I will go more in details about this product uh, in the next slides. Great. So can you talk about that inductive position sensor a bit more? What benefits does this solution bring to the table versus other solutions on the market today? Today, the market is basically done with a traditional expensive optical encoder. So we, as on same, we provide a high resolution absolute encoder with simpler and well-proven solution than optical encoder itself. So with a high-speed industrial approach. So this means a low system cost uh, allows to reduce dramatically the bill of material. It's also introduced higher robustness, which is completely sensitive to temperature and contaminants. And also, considering the integrated MCU and DSP with embedded calibration, also a very fast implementation into the system. Okay, so Alessandro, why would I want to choose an inductive encoder versus a magnetic solution or an optical solution? Sure, so as uh, we discussed before, so inductive has uh, some advantages. The first one is the low sensitivity to any vibration or contaminants. No matter how is it dust, water, oil, or metal particles, they are not affect the inductive field. We can provide a very low component count, and of course, the no use of rear health materials, for example, for the magnets, is very robust. So is industrial is important to have high repeatability and temperature insensitivity. And even if we consider it also is mobile robots, we have to move, it's very lightweight. Okay, so what kind of specifications are we looking at when it comes to OnSemi's inductive position sensor? So here we can see the block diagrams and the main feature of the NCS-52100. So it's a high-precision encoder with high accuracy and high speed. This is also the advantage of both high-speed in optical and magnetic. So is high accuracy, we're talking about with a 38 millimeter sensor design plus minus 50 arcosecond or even better. 
the device is able to reach up to 100,000 maximum RPM and with a full accuracy up to 6,000 RPM. All the calibration coefficients are in a store into the system. And due to the fact that there's integrated the MCU, which is a Corte M0 Plus, is very, very high configurable, so very flexible. And is important, it's immune to temperature and contaminants as well. So can we take a closer look at what all goes into an optical encoder solution as well? Here you can see in this slide a comparison between an optical encoder base on the left side and our own semi dual inductive sense solution. On the left side, you can see there are more than 100 components, optical disc, uh, stator PCB, LED driver PCB with a lot of components on board. So on our solution with NCS 42100, no components are needed on the rotor PCB. Only one stator PCB is needed with around 12 components only, including also the NCS 42100, which is a very thin 5x5 five five millimeter package. So what kind of power solutions does this design include? Let's now look at the power supply. For sure, it is power of a battery. So, but the battery needs to be charged at some point. The autonomous robot has the intelligence to drive the power charging point. So, for example, in this demonstrator, an external robot arm connects the power cable to an autonomous robot to charge up the robot when it's in position. In this case, we are using two boards. So, on the top side, we have the 600 watt AC mains input battery charger. For the autonomous robots, consists of three sessions as a PF stage, an isolated LSS converter, and a back converter. So the PFC stage is based on NCP6081, our high-performance totem pole PFC controller. So this ensures that the power drawn from the AC line has a very good power factor and low total harmonic distortion. So the LSC stage converts the output from the PFC stage, which is usually something like 400 volt DC, to a 48 volt DC output voltage. Using an LSC topology, in this case, with a center tap at half bridge topology. Then we have the NCS uh, 3099, used uh, in the, this current design, and uh, the more advanced NCP 3994, and will be recommended for newer design. The output is a synchronous rectifier using two FDM S8622 ET medium voltage MOSFET, and is controlled by two NCP 4305D, which are synchronous rectification controlled. Battery charging profiles includes a constant current charging modes, which result in a wide range of operating voltage. LSC stage, by topology, have a very narrow operating range for their voltage conversion rate, or what is called gain. So they don't work well in a constant current. In this design, there is a third backstage, which is using the FAN 65008, which can run with a very wide range of voltage conversion ratio so can easily provide the current and the voltage profile which are required for battery charging. So, Alessandro, what kind of design concerns should we keep in mind when it comes to these power subsystems? To define the common subsystem, we'll need to look inside the robot and separate the need to have function from the additional function each different robot may have. Here in the example, you can see the robot in the foreground which is interacting with boxes on the conveyor belt. The arm and the gripper are not common with the robots to the right of it. We will look into the gray box that each of robots has for the common system. One common subsystem is the power subsystem. So part of the power subsystem, as we discussed before, is the battery. The battery requirements can differ by user case and depend on the power requirements from the mobile robots components and their draw power. So for example, like the motors, the sensor, the compute units, the lights, and as well how the EMR is used. So how far the mobile robot has to drive between charges and what is the payload or the cargo mass. More and more industrial autonomous robots uh, that want to use the opportunity charging. So what is called opportunity charging. So we'll have an onboard charger to charge the battery. So OnSemi has a power supply design like the 600 watt 48 on the Pol PSC, which I showed before for charging solution. So you also mentioned lighting solutions as well, right? What would that look like in this case? Our autonomous robot solution is equipped with LED lights to show its presence to people and other robots. Additional LED lights are used for signaling. Monsemi is an established supplier of headlight, taillight, daytime running light times, and signal light solution to the automotive and industrial vehicle market. So we select here two products from this wide portfolio to use in our autonomous robot. The NCV 7685 
which is an automotive tail LED lighting solution, is a driver with integrated MOSFET solution, which is simple to use. There are 12 parallel 60 milliamp channels, which are PWMs controlled, so via an S2C interfaces. The LED driver has a full diagnostic, which can be read back by the microcontroller to detect any specific error, for example, short circuit condition, on the pin setting, the current error, asperous communication, thermal warning, and so on. So this information can be used by the microcontroller, for example, to support necessary corrective action, such communicating the error back to the central host controller, which is monitoring the local autonomous robot. On top of that, we have the NCL3100, which is used for the signal lighting. So it has an integrated but converted to power the chip from a very wide range, going up to 57 volt. It has a faster LED switching frequency than the NCB7685. So it runs between 44 kilohertz up to one megahertz. And it has an excellent differential integral non-linearity rate. So this product is very suitable for use, for example, for visual lighting communication protocols, which gives, uh, for example, to the robot uh, an additional option for communication with its environments. So we also need to talk about communication solutions as well, right? Can we take a closer look at that aspect? So in addition to the visual lighting communication, the autonomous robots can communicate its status to outside world, for example, using Bluetooth low energy wireless communication. The autonomous robots use the RSL-10 Bluetooth low energy sensor node, which monitor free axis acceleration, ambient light, temperature, humidity, barometric pressure, and also air quality, and also have a free axis gyroscope and magnetometers. So it also has a microphone for audio sensing, as well as an NFC app. The module uses RSL-10 system in package, so this results in a very, very compact solution. Is a six by eight millimeter package, which is include the ARM M3 microcontroller with a DSP accelerator, and also include the antenna, the inductor, the capacitors, all the crystal needs to make a very compact solution. Due to that, the solution is very easy to design with, and the solution requires no RF expertise to build it and come already certified with both Bluetooth and different worldwide RF compatibility standards. The RSL10 system in package also has a ultra low power consumption, so will not present a big drain from the battery on the autonomous robot. In this case, the Bluetooth low energy interface allows a firmware of their programming, so ROTA, and hardware with 128-bit AES encryption block is also ensure a secure symmetric encryption and data transmission over the air. And finally, there are a number of building blocks in the model which can be connected together with a single pair Ethernet connection, so we can see in the next slides. All right, so you brought up 10-base T1S Ethernet technology earlier. So can you talk about the benefits that this technology brings to AMR designs? So industrial networks today have a traditional been built with a point-to-point network technology. So with the latest industrial network technologies, a factory, robot or cobot, can be entirely connected using far fewer cable runs, less labor and higher data rates. So we can move from a very means that replacing all yellow wires you can see here on the left side with a single wire and also uh, reduce the total cost of the components and the wiring. And here you can see in the next slide how the cabling is done. So you can see on the robot arms and on the cobalt arms, you can see all the Ethernet to the edge are connected. So there's no need to gateway because it's Ethernet based, switches, is running up to 10 megabits and is a multi-drop technology and is using what is called a single pair Ethernet solution. In the next slide, you can see the advantage of our NCN 260110. Of course, we're talking about Ethernet is a standard, but there are some features which are out of the standard, which are bringing to have a better performance, provide better performance to our designer. On the left side, you can see what the standard has to have. So at least eight nodes up to 25 meters as a minimum. So you need to have eight different devices connected, at least with a 25 meters minimum. With our enhanced noise immunity system feature, here uh, you can see how we can go further. So here's what we test in our system. We were able to drive up to 40 nodes in 25 meters or 16 nodes up to 50 meters or even six nodes up to 60 meters. 
So can you tell me more about OnSemi's 10-base T1S industrial Ethernet solution? Here you can see the main feature of the device and the block diams. So NCN26010 is a multi-drop Ethernet with Mac and Phi integrated. It's certified in compliance with the IEEE 802.3.3 CG protocol, which is, is mentioned in the 10-base T1S. It has a data rate of 10 megabits per second, half duplex. Is based on SPI interface. It works with a physical layer collision avoidance, so so-called PLC, and it has additional feature like what we discussed before, the enhanced noise immunity system. It's a Mac and Phi solution, so this allows to use a very simple MCU, for example, in a cheap sensor itself, and they're willing to replace various wire protocols like Hart, Fieldbus, CAN, RS485, or RS2 fix rays, and so on. So let's talk about applications. Alessandro, what kind of applications would this Ethernet solution be a good fit for? It's various. So the application for the 10 t one s are not only, of course, limited to autonomous row. There's a strong interest in using the protocol, for example, in elevator cabins. So industrial cabinet as well has a lot of wiring, which can be reduced when using a 10 t one s solution, which also gives you connectivity to each element. For example... Most simple circuit breakers to date do not have any connectivity. So if is there a failure, it's very difficult to detect which one has triggered. 10 based one s offer a very low-cost, compact approach for connecting and monitoring all the conductors. Another application in industrial is indoor localization, together with using Bluetooth low energy, which needs sensor in the ceiling placed at uh, you know, regular 10 to 20 meters intervals. Using a standard Ethernet or Wi-Fi to connect all the sensors will be very expensive and, uh, and also requires a lot of cabling. The connection using 10 based T1S will greatly simplify the wire. And here you can see other examples, so like lighting, uh, intra-system communication, building automation. We not have to exclude also transportation, like train, tram, bus, and also, of course, automotive. So what kind of MCU would you suggest here? Bluetooth Low Energy technology has been deployed in new application areas like automotive and industrial automation. Our technology dramatically reduced the overall power consumption of the Bluetooth Low Energy devices. This enabling our customer to ship a lifetime of energy in the box. So we're talking about industrial. For example, the main application could be asset tracking and text using usually a standard coin cells with a lifetime with using our devices up to 10 years. Medical devices. So we have small wearable medical devices where we have a smaller peak currents. So this is resulting in an increase of comfort for the user and also the changing of the batteries. And building controls, for example, using energy harvesting lighting control. Here is a control which is using only the energy generated by the movement of a single coil to transmit, to generate or to provide power to our solution to send a message through BLA. Automotive, always here considering uh, the low consumption, is a keyless access for car. So due thanks to the low slip current, so this allows to eliminate all the drain for car battery while the car is not running. And this is especially relevant for AV solutions. And the tire pressure monitoring system. Also here, Onsemi has a 10 to 20 times lower slip current than a competition solution automotive qualified. In this slide, you can see the BLA plus 10 base the T1S Mac5 solution. So in this case, the solution consists of two evolution boards, so the NCN26010 evolution board and the RSL10 evolution board. This solution can support a tiny web server with a minimal feature set. This to enhance the security and control the NCN26010 through an SPI interface. As you can see here, the NCN26010 Mac and Phi solution is very thin, and the combination of the RSL10 system in package and the NCN26010 takes up a very little board space. We have 10 based one s software written for the RSL10, which is using lightweight IP and the free RTOS plus TCP. The OnSemi product page for the NCN26010 has the software ready to download, and as well, the RSL10 product page has the RSL10 CMI SIS libraries and an integrated development environment than other software utilized for development work with the RSL10. Fantastic. So, Alessandro, can you recap your main points for me? So, basically, the recap is that 
OnSemi is providing already a full solution, a compressive solution to develop an autonomous mobile robot concept. We are talking about the main products like MOSFET, gate driver, power modules, isolation devices, amplifier, as well as the fuse, image sensor, LiDAR, LDOs, plus what we discussed together. So already like uh, image sensing, uh, sensing, uh, power supplies, and so on. All right. Well, Alessandro, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me. Thanks a lot for hosting me. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find even more information about this topic from OnSemi. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talk section of EE Journal. You can't miss it. It's right across the top. Or head on over to YouTube, youtube.com slash eejournal.